Hi, everybody. What we're going to do today is we're going to look at the Algebra 1 Unit 2 exam from the NJSLA website. This is the practice exams. What I'm going to do is a very similar problem to the ones that they give you. Hopefully, this will make sense and you'll be able to do these problems after you've done this Ed Puzzle. So here they are. First of all, we have number one, three, five, seven, eight, eleven, thirteen. Don't try to do the other ones because you probably won't be able to, but I guarantee you'll be able to do these. So uh, this first problem says a prize of $600 is divided among three top places. Each place pays $50 less than the previous place. Now this is a little confusing because you could just guess and check and find it eventually. I mean, eventually you'd probably get an answer. But imagine if it were down to the penny, you probably wouldn't be able to guess and it would require that you do the algebra. And in fact, in things like uh, if you were looking at a uh, poker tournament, for example, I play a lot of poker tournaments and a lot of times there are hundreds of places that pay and there is a specific formula that they use to determine the payouts. In this particular case, I'm going to let first place be called X. So the amount of payout for first place is X. Second place pays $50 less than first. And third place pays $50 less than second. So what I'd like you to do is see if you can write the next two places as expressions. So think about what $50 less than means. And the big trick here is remember, less than means reverse subtraction. And so first place pays X dollars, second place then pays X minus 50. Remember, less than means reverse subtraction. And third place pays $50 less than second place. And that is X minus 50 minus 50 more. So we're looking at three places and our first place is X plus second place is X minus 50 plus third place, which is X minus 100. And we get a total of $600 paid out. And what we wanna do is solve for all three places, find your X value, which is first place, then write the places for first, second, and third. You all can finish this. I want you to notice something. I didn't write a diagram this time, but I did do a formula. I substituted into my formula, first plus second plus third is $600. Then I simplify. So I have three X minus 150 is equal to 600. We add the 150 to both sides. And we get three X is equal to 750. And we divide by three. And we get X is equal to $250. That will allow you to find the three places. And you should be able to now identify first, second, and third place as prize money. So there you go. Let's look at the next one. Oops. Here it is. All right. So we have a almost standard form equation. Now, personally, I would prefer it be in standard form. So I would subtract the one from both sides, but it isn't necessary to do that to identify solutions. Some people would even go as far as to solve for Y, which I think is a really bad idea, but you could do that too. Um, my idea is just simply substitute them in and see which one works. So I'm going to substitute in my negative one, two, and see if it's true. Negative five times X plus two Y. And you know what? I think I am going to go ahead and subtract the one from both sides so that it is in what we call standard form. And I'm going to substitute in my first value, which is negative five times negative one plus two times two. And is that equal to negative 10? And that's my first question right here. And is this true? Is five plus not four equal to negative 10? And of course it's not. We can see immediately that positive five plus four is not negative 10. So that is not a solution. 
Now I'm going to have you fill in all the rest and substitute them in and see which ones are solutions. So our next one, negative five times negative two plus two times negative five, is that equal to negative 10? That is a question. And of course, negative 10, positive 10 plus negative 10 is zero, isn't it? So this one is not true either. So now we have another one. Let's see if that one works. So we have negative five times zero plus two times negative four. Is that equal to negative 10? And that's not either. So we're looking for solutions that will make this true. Let's see if this, this next one will work. Negative five times two plus two times five is that equal to negative 10? And that's not, that's zero. So this one is not a solution. Negative five times two plus two times zero, is that equal to negative 10? And it sure is. So this one is a solution to that equation. In fact, that is called an x-intercept. Let's check the next one. Negative five times four, plus two times negative five is equal to negative 10. Let's see if that's true. We have negative 20 plus negative 10 is negative 30. This is not true, so this one is not equal. And finally, we have one more. Negative five times four plus two times five, is that equal to negative 10? And sure enough, negative 20, I'm gonna write it down, plus 10 is equal to negative 10. And that is true. So we had two solutions that were true and a whole bunch that were not. Now, it would be faster to do it in your head, you know, working them out, but a lot of people can't do the, the uh, expressions that quickly. So there you have it. Let's look at another one. Now this one gives us three different points and we're looking for a solution. Uh, we're looking for an equation. So let's see if we can find the equation and we're supposed to also graph it. So we've got these two points. I could use these two points or I could use the other two points. It doesn't matter. And all I have to do is find my slope first. So let's find our slope. The slope is equal to three minus negative seven over 20 minus negative five. And that is going to be 10. This is positive 10 over 25. And that reduces, doesn't it, to two fifths. Now, we can substitute into y equals mx plus b. And what's really nice is it doesn't make any difference which one of these three points you use. And, and I can show you that, but um, let's go ahead and, and do it once. Let's do the negative five, negative seven real quick. So I'm gonna write y equals mx plus b, and I'm gonna choose y is negative seven, m is two fifths, x is negative five plus b. And I've got a negative one and that gives me negative two plus b is equal to negative seven. And I'm gonna add two to both sides. And darn thing, this thing's in my way. b is equal to negative five. Sorry, it's a little bit hard to read there. So my equation is y equals 2 fifths x minus 5. Now there's a good way to check these. You can substitute in the other points. For example, 23. Let's make sure that's actually true. 2 fifths of 20 minus 5 should be equal to 3. 
Let's see if that's true. The 5 cancels with the 20 to give us 4. That's 8 minus 5 is equal to 3. And sure enough, it's true. There's my equation, and you should be able to graph this. You just graph it at 0, negative 5. And then you count your slope up to and over 5, and you draw your line. There it is. A uh, little practice goes a long ways on those. Let's do one more. This one is what I consider to be uh, probably the easiest problem on the test because it involves doing the opposite to both sides in reverse order. And we can see that we multiplied by one third, which is the same as uh, dividing by three. We multiplied by pi, we multiplied by h, and then we squared the b. Now, the problem is that we want to go in or order of operations, and we want to do it in reverse. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write down what happened to b. The first thing that happened to b is that we squared it. Then, oh man, let me do something a little bit different. I started with b, and then I squared it based on what it says here. Then I multiplied it by h and pi. I'm going to go ahead and do both of them. Then I multiplied by one third or divided by three, and I got to v. Now, in order to get back to v, I have to do the opposite to both sides in reverse order. And the first thing I'm going to do is get rid of that darn one third. That is just freaking me out. So I'm going to get rid of one third by multiplying by three. Notice that that is the opposite of dividing by three. Remember that we do it in this order in order to solve it. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to do this to both sides. I am going to multiply by 3 on both sides. And I get 3v is equal to pi b squared h. I, I'm leaving my my color the same there. Now I'm going to do another step. Uh, let me put the next step in black. I don't know why I did that. So my next step is to divide by pi and h. And I'm going to divide by pi and h on both sides. The pi cancels with the pi. The h cancels with the h. And I'm left with 3v over pi h is equal to b squared. My last step is to undo this square right here, which is the square root. And I'm going to take the square root of both sides. Normally, I would put a plus or minus on it. But because it's a real value, where these are the base, these are the b's along the base of a square pyramid. And I'm going to take the square root of both sides. Let me do that. Take the square root. And there it is. There's my b value. b is equal to the square root of 3v over pi h. And there you have it. Now I'm going to, I have a couple more problems, I think. Let me see what I have next here. Oh, I love this problem. And here's what we want to do. We want to identify a uh, function instead of a relation. And what we want to do is we want to replace this square with some of these numbers that will still make it a function. Now I'm going to choose one that will not make it a function. And I'm going to choose 8. 8 will make this not a function because functions have to be predictable. If I put in a given value for a function, I have to know that I'm going to get a very specific value out. And what happened in this case is that I ended up with two different x's that don't work because 8 is going to 3. And over here at the end, 8 is going to 12. So this is not predictable, which makes it not a function. So 8 is not an answer. Find all the other possible solutions and then uh, try some of the other ones as well. Um, let's see if you can do this one. This is similar to the other problem that I gave you. 
and you'll be able to solve it if you want. And there's one more. This is the last one and you're gonna solve it for X. So you do the opposite in reverse order to both sides. Notice that you're subtracting four and then you're squaring. So when you go through your solution, you're gonna to have to take the square root and then add the four. So there you go. Good luck. I hope you can do some of these on your own.